Our next speaker is Senator Barnaby Joyce, leader of the Nationals in the Senate and L an L L LNP Senator for Queensland. Personally, he is one of the few voices I feel comfortable with in the Senate and I have great expectations of him. Welcome, Barnaby Joyce. <clears throat> well, thank you very much uh, for that, Cameron. Uh, to Graeme and Jenny, thank you for giving us the opportunity to use your place for this forum. It's very good of you. It's good to get a chance for people to get together. Vaughan Johnson, great to go for a run around with you, mate. Great to see you. John, uh, Lee, uh, Ash, God, it seems to be everybody here. Um, ladies and gentlemen, they're going to call an election, I think, this afternoon or tomorrow. So um, we're going to be heading off to the polls in, in uh, uh, 33 days. I think we just should just start with that. We've got to realise what we're in for if we get this crowd back. Um, I'm just going to mention a few things for you to think about, right? Um, remember, this is the crowd that's going to bring in the emissions trading scheme, which, to be honest, the National Party stood up against and stopped. Uh, this is the crowd who's going to decide that they're going to change the temperature of the globe to maroon in Canberra. Uh, they said they can do it. They, they must be telling the truth. Um, if you do get an emissions trading scheme, then the price of... Let's have a look around here. price of the steel is going to go up. Uh, concrete, you won't have a concrete industry in this, station, in this nation. Um, steel and aluminium, well, aluminium, that'll go. You can forget about that. Uh, steel pearls and trusses, they'll be out. Uh, the whole fabric of your nation is, is going to change because some lunatic thinks they can change the temperature from a room in Canberra. So you're going to get that if you get this um, Ms Gillard as your Prime Minister, and you've got about 33 days to try and work out how you're going to get rid of her. Um, let's go on. Remember, they brought in the. They remember they'll go and import cattle, uh, import beef from countries with BSEs. Don't forget that decision. They just did it one night. Remember, and we had to get it on our on our bikes straight away and turn that decision around. Well, you're going to get more of those decisions. They're about to start importing apples that are um, from China. Uh, what's going to happen to our apple industry? Um, what about bananas if they start coming from the Philippines? If you get this crowd back, you're going to get a crowd that's about to bring forward a thing called the Sustainable Diversion Limits. You probably haven't heard of them here, but this is a thing in the Murray-Darling Basin where they are literally going to wake up in the middle of the night and take uh, up to 30% of people's water licences off them. Not pay them for them, not buy them off them, steal them. Labor government are very good at stealing things when they don't have the money for it. Um, if you believe that they can steal that, then I suppose they can steal anything. They've already stole your vegetation with the tree clearing laws. Uh, that was your asset. They thieved it off you. And um, I don't believe that the government, when the government becomes the thief, when it thieves off the individual, when it believes in the, the dispossession of the individual of an asset to put in the communal hands, well, there's a word for that. It's called communism, and we've had it before, and it doesn't work. Um, so you've got to think about this, because the lady who's running the Labor Party now was the convener of the socialist action um, of South Australia. That, that's who your Prime Minister is going to be. Um, so this is a very serious election. Also, you've got a party at the moment who talks about population but seems to want to put everybody in Brisbane, Sydney and Melbourne. That's, that's their policy. And uh, that's no good for us, it's no good for our nation, it's no good for where our country goes. So there's the negative side. Let's start talking about some of the positive things, the positive things that uh, the coalition will, will, will drive toward. First of all, I've had a commitment from Tony Abbott that the government will not be a party to the theft of assets off individuals. He said that at, at when we had the Peter Spencer rally. Um, a lot of people thought that was politically incorrect for uh, me to go to those and for me to drag him along, but we did it. So we're going to re-enshrine your right of ownership over private property. Nobody bothers going to work if they believe at the end of the day they don't own the asset. So it's absolutely and vitally important that we underpin rural Australia with a sense of private ownership of an asset means it's absolutely yours. If they want to go to the marketplace and try and buy it off you, well and good. They just keep sticking up their hands at the auction till, till they own it, and that's their business. But they cannot just turn up in the middle of the night and dispossess you of your asset, which is what's happened in the past. That must stop. Um, we will build... We will build the inland rail. Other people talk about it, we'll do it. I, I didn't particularly want to be in the shadow cabinet. It was never really my, my gig. Um, and there's times I think I'm not going to be there for much longer. But whilst I'm there, one of the things that we are going to do is we're going to actually be constructive and build things that make this nation a better place. Um, it is ridiculous that we have 
overburdened ports in, in, in Melbourne and in Sydney, and we have excess capacity in Gladstone, uh, yet we don't have a rail line that goes straight between the two. Uh, we've got to build that. We've got to actually create a vision and make our nation a stronger place and create that corridor of commerce so that families growing up in regional areas, because where it'll go, in regional areas, have the potential to get themselves access to multiple ports. And that will be a good thing for our nation, to be able to move transport within 24 hours between those ports. We will do that. We will go forward with that. We will go forward, and, we are, and I keep on taking it back to Shadow Canada over and over again with a form of zonal taxation. Maybe it'll be for the most remote areas, but we'll get some form of real incentive to get people out to the fast corners, into the disparate corners of our nation, to those areas where people won't go. We'll make it sure that there's something uh, real for people's back pocket if they want to decide to live in Weeper or decide to live in, uh, I don't know, Burke or maybe out near Mount Tom Price. Um, this is the sort of things that we are going to do. We're going to, our approach is to try and make sure that we start a real population policy of creating regional capitals where people want to live, to give people the, the motivation to move to Rockhampton, and not just move to Rockhampton, but to get them off the coast as well, to get them into places such as uh, Longreach, into places such as Emerald, into places such as Tamworth, Dubbo, uh, to make us understand that it's not just in the regional Australia's interest that these towns grow, but it's in Australia's interest. Because if we don't grow those towns, and remember, as a nation, you're growing at 300,000 people plus a year. That means that by 2050, there's not going to be, um, as I say, 35 million people living in Australia. There'll be about 44, double our current population. Uh, now, everybody says, and this is where I probably, p people might disagree with me, everybody says, that's a terrible thing. I don't know whether it is, if it's the right people. I don't want people who are going to turn my social fabric upside down, who are going to um, try and turn my nation's culture into something that it's not, who's going to you know, tr try and uh, change the basically that this is a Judaic Christian country. If you want to maintain those, that, that principle, then I'm, I'm, I'm happy for our population to grow because the more it grows, the more money we're going to make for our product. And I come from a cattle producing family and I want to make sure that we make money. Um, I'll tell you what we won't do though, we're not going to make money if we keep on doing what this Labor government is doing, and that is standing idly by, and the one thing I'm worried about at the moment is the continued centralisation of industry. We've seen the centralisation of the retail industry, Coles and Woolworths, I'll call them out. Um, it has not been healthy for us, for them to have 80% of the retail market. It is not a good sale yard to go to when there's only two buyers. That, that, is, not a, that is not how you get a good price. Um, and now we're seeing the processing market starting to get more and more centralised, and that concerns me. Uh, there is nothing we can do currently in this nation if it over-centralises. To be honest, if Swifts end up taking more and more and more of the marketplace, then they have to do what I was supposed to do when I worked for AMH when it was owned by ConAgra, and that's pay you less and less. Um, that's what you do when you get market power. You don't pay people more, you pay people less, because you can. No one's got anywhere else to go. Why would you throw good money after bad. But this government, and I read about it in the paper today, Craig Emerson comes out and he gets stuck into me because I talk about divestiture powers, which is the power to break a company up if it gets too big. The United States of America has the Clayton's Act and the Sherman Act. They have the acts and have had them for 105 years to break companies up that get too big. And they don't have to do it, they just have to have the threat of doing it and that usually pulls people into gear. The United Kingdom has the Enterprise Act to do exactly the same thing, divestiture powers. Australia doesn't have any divestiture powers, except a very limited divestiture powers and, uh, for criminal cartels and after mergers and acquisitions. But Australia should have a divestiture power because I can offer you nothing. If someone gets too big in your marketplace, in the beef marketplace, I can't break them up because there is no power in Australia to break them up. We just have to go like with a begging bowl and plead with them to be better to you. And that doesn't work. Um, poverty is a very poor pulpit to sing from. So we should have a divestiture power. And what I implore you to do is when you hear things such as divestiture powers being talked about uh, in the paper, um, changes to the Trade Practices Act, you've got to realise that that is a message for you. That is a message for you to try and make sure that we have the powers at our disposal to make sure you get a fair price to make sure that back to the farm gate gets a fair price for the farmer. In Australia, you get one of the worst returns per beast when you compare it to the shelf price of the product. 
I think you only get about 20%, 21%. In America, they get about 42%. In Europe, they get over 60%. Um, my role, on your behalf, in your nation's capital, and trying to do the job as best I can, is to try and make sure we get a better return to you. But we're not going to get a better return if we keep centralising the marketplace. So you've got to concentrate on that. And you've got to try and change, as Vaughan was saying, you have to try and be part of the process of changing the attitude in Canberra and in Queensland to say, people, it, it is not politically incorrect for us to want a better price at the farm gate. Because uh, some of these people always talk about, oh, well, you know, you can't go against the religion of the absolute unbridled free marketplace. But there's nothing free and it's not competition when there's only two teams or one team in it. The, a the ARL would look like a pretty strange rugby league competition if there was only two teams. But this is what we're having in the retail market and we're heading the towards that direction in the processing market and you better do something about it because otherwise it's not going to stop. So what I'll be pushing for as part of a coalition government is to make sure we get reforms to the Trade Practices Act on your behalf. Um, so here's a comparison. On the eve of the election, before it all starts, you're gonna have to make it, we've got to make a choice and be part of the process of either putting Ms Gillard as the Prime Minister of Australia for another three years, and remember, ladies and gentlemen, you currently, as we sit here today, you owe $150 billion to people um, you, at the gross debt. The people you owe the most money to are the Chinese, then possibly people on the streets of Japan, then people in the Middle East. You've got to pay this money back. You're borrowing $150 million a day. And somewhere along the track, you're going to have to try and pay back $150 million a day, and that's going to be worth watching. I don't know how we do that. I really don't. Um, if we don't turn this ship around in the next 33 days, if we end up with a Labor government, with the debt it's got and the process it's got and the experience that you've had from everything from tree clearing to BSE um, to, the, to the to whole sort of process of being ignored or for services being removed, then things aren't going to get better, they're going to get worse. Um, my process is not to be a, a, you know, uh, a, a prisoner of a, a political party or of a point of view, but it's to try and get the best deal back to you people. Uh, and I think the next uh, 33 days, ladies and gentlemen, are going to be absolutely crucial. I thank you very much for your concentration and listening to me, and God bless.